Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today I'm going to guide you through all of the steps that you need to create an amazing sculpt inside of Blender. So let's get to it. Now before we start, if you're completely, completely new to Blender and you heard that it's an amazing software to create cool things, then yeah, you heard right. It's a really, really cool software. However, you do need to know the very basics such as the interface movement and things like that. So I have a video that's gonna be right around here where I go through those elements right there. Once you have that nailed and you're ready to jump, we can go into sculpting. So this right here, let me delete that cube. I'm gonna create a new mesh a cube. And this right here is our basic cube inside of Blender. And usually when we're working inside of Blender, we work inside of the edit mode to utilize the components of our objects, such as the faces, edges, and vertex to generate like more complex things, right? However, there's other ways in which we can create things inside of the 3D world, and that's where sculpting comes into play. So I'm going to go to object mode, and I'm going to go to sculpting, and you're going to see that now we are inside of this sculpting menu. I personally like to select this thing and just like get it out so that we can see all of the names of the brushes, but that's my personal preference. Now, what's happening here is we are now in a more organic way to modify our object. Instead of doing it by components, we modify all of the vertex at the same time. So all of the brushes that we have here on the side are are brushes that we can use to change the silhouette of our object. However, we need to prepare this object. We cannot just like start sculpting and expect to have a lot of details. You can see right here, even though I'm pressing, like just a very, very small movement is happening right there on the vertex. And the reason why this is happening is because this cube is only made out of a six faces. So let me get another example, Shift A, I'm gonna mesh and create an UV sphere. Now with this sphere, if we go back to sculpting, you can see when I start going over it, most of the elements are like moving a little bit. We're using the basic draw brush and the draw brush is adding volume to our element. By the way, it's strongly recommended that you use a pen display or a pen tablet. My recommendation, I have a Hoyon 16, 2016, 2021 Canvas 16. Uh, there's a review over there as well. Uh, but you can use any, any pen tablet. Now, when you're in this viewport, things change a little bit. Right click or sorry, middle mouse click is going to like rotate this around. Shift and middle mouse is going to move this around and control and middle mouse is going to zoom things around. Okay, so those are the three basic like things that we can do to navigate inside of the sculpting tab. So now the very important thing right here is that when we are using the draw brush, we're pushing the points out of the circumference of the sphere, right? Of the surface of this sphere. And in order for us to get the more detail into the sphere, we need to add more resolution. So there's two ways, two basic ways in which we can add resolution to our sphere. The first one is traditionally by going to layout and for instance, going to a modifier and adding, let's say a subdivision modifier. If you add a subdivision surface and we divide this a couple of times, let's say three times or four times, and we apply this, now all of those polygons are active here. And if I go back to sculpting, I'm gonna be able to add more detail on the surface of the sphere, which is really, 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 really cool. However, there are more efficient ways to do this. So let's go back to layout. Let's go back to subdivision and let's eliminate this one. And there's a very cool modifier that works specifically for sculpting. I'm gonna go to modifier and I'm gonna add this thing called a multi-resolution modifier. And what this allows me to do is I can still divide this normally, let's say one, two, three divisions, but instead of seeing the full divisions here in the viewport and occupying a lot of memory, I can lower this to let's say subdivision level one. And when I jump into, into sculpting, since I have sculpt set to three, I'm gonna be seeing this at subdivision level three. So I can sculpt things normally over here. You can press control, for instance, to remove volume from your element and start carving in. And then if we jump back to layout, we're going to see a simplified version of the element, which is going to keep things a lot lighter. Don't worry, when we render, because render is set to three as well, when we render, what's going to happen is we're going to see the full display very, very nicely right there. So that's one of the methods that we can use to generate more polygons, because the more polygons we have, the more detail we can get into the sculpting section of things. So if we go to sculpting, another thing that we can do, and for this, we're not gonna use the modifier, so I'm actually gonna delete it. Another thing we can do is we can use something called remeshing. So the remeshing menu is right here, and what remeshing does is it destroys your topology. Whatever you had on the original object is completely gone when you remesh, but it's gonna voxelize your whole thing. It's gonna make it, like remake it with a lot of like little squares. And the more squares we have, again, the more detail we can have. So by pressing the letter R, we can set up the size of the boxes that we want. So for instance, if I go, let's say to 0.03 and I hit click and I press control R to remesh, as you can see, my sphere has now changed and I can see that it's made out of a lot of, lot of little, little uh, like quads and triangles, I think. And uh, this thing right here is very, very important because now we have way more geometry and we can start sculpting a lot more detail. 
Of course, we can press Control R again to remesh. So anytime we change the silhouette and it changes drastically, we can press Control R and that's going to remesh. You can see how all of those areas get like reworked. Or you can press R and make this even smaller. Let's go all the way to 0 0.007, for instance, and Control R. So now we're going to have a lot of little points and we're going to be able to create a very nice detail. If I press the letter F, as you can see right here, I'm going to be able to make the brush a lot smaller and look at the amount of detail that we can inject into the model. This is what's going to allow us to generate all the very nice details that we want. Now, I promised that we were going to be doing a, a, an exercise to learn about this whole thing. So let's first bring in the element that we're going to be doing. I'm going to press number three in layout mode, and we're going to press shift A, and I'm going to bring in this um, image reference, and I got this on the desktop, this hatchet. So this guy right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this around so that the stick of the hatchet is like straight forward, something like this. Perfect. And let's very, very quickly create the hatchet like handle. That's why I was recommending that if you've never used Blender before, go back into the intro to Blender video and um, and just like take that quick uh, uh, tutorial so that you can follow very nicely over here. So now that we have this, I'm going to go first, I'm going to go to the image itself. And on the opacity, I'm going to lower the opacity to something like 0.1. There we go. And I'm going to press shift A, and I'm going to create a mesh. And this is going to be a cylinder. I'm going to make the cylinder a lot smaller, something like that. There we go. And just position it right around there. I'm going to go to component mode with tap. I'm going to press Z and go into wireframe mode. I'm going to select all of this vertex right here. And with G, I'm going to bring them all the way up. And then this one right here, again, with G, I'm going to bring them right around there. Now I'm going to go to number three, which is faces. And I'm going to select the faces on the bottom. As you can see that one right there. And then I'm going to press E to extrude and bring this out. And then G. R to rotate. I could even scale this a little bit with S, G, and there we go. We just need a base, a very, very basic base here for the element. Let's go back to vertex mode. I'm going to scale this guys up just a tad bit. And then with my loop cut brush, I'm going to add, or actually this one right here, I'm just going to add, let's say, one right there, one right there, and one right there. Vertex mode again. And we're just going to move this guys here. This guy's right around here. This guy's there, and let's just scale these guys to make them a little bit thinner. So very simple, right? Like we've, we've very, very like simply created this interesting uh, cylinder right here. Now that we have the cylinder, I'm going to hide the image for just a second, and we're going to go to sculpting mode. And as you can see, this is what we have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a voxelized remesh surface. So I'm going to press R to set my, my density. I'm going to start with a high density, so something like 0 0.09, and I'm going to press Control R. And now this has been converted to a voxelized mesh. The first thing I want to do is I want to remove all of those like little lines that we had from the, what's the word, from the original like a uh, faceted look of the cylinder. So you can press shift, shift is a smooth. And as you can see, we can smooth things out. However, I definitely want to work with symmetry. So over here, I can turn on symmetry on X so that when we smooth on one side, we get the same result on the other side. And look at that. Very, very, very good. Now, I'm going to use one of my favorite brushes inside of a Blender, which is this scrape brush. And I really like this one because it gives us a very sort of like beveled look to the whole thing. So I'm going to make this a lot smaller. And I'm going to use this to start beveling this corner up here. And look at how nice and clean this shape looks. Not bad, right? So it's kind of like a, like a damaged sort of like wood effect that we have right there. Over here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to start like beveling this edge right here. And for instance, we have this sharp corner right there. Might be a good idea to also bevel it a little bit. And that's going to look like a like a, this sort of like a wood effect where we're adding a lot of detail that would be pretty much impossible to add if we were trying to do this in a more traditional way, right? If we were trying to do this model-wise, it would be very difficult to get this sort of like surface that's making our whole axe look like wood. Now, I'm going to go very stylized. I really want to go a little bit stylized, sort of like, a, I don't know, like World of Warcraft, League of Legends, that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make my brushes smaller, and I'm going to also make my voxels smaller with R. So I'm going to go to all the way to like 0 0.04. There we go. And I'm going to press Control R. So now, very important, I'm going to go here to statistics. And I'm going to turn them on. So you can see we have 78,000 vertex. Okay, that's quite a bit. Might seem like a lot of, uh, a lot of points, but it's actually not that bad. I'm going to use now the draw sharp element. And one of the things that we can do here is we can start creating kind of like the, you know, like the wood grain that we normally see on this sort of elements. Oh. Now, the cool thing about working with a, what is, what's the word with a, oh my God, 
I'm dying here, with a tablet is that we should be able to use pen pressure. And pen pressure is going to allow us to do the details a lot, lot softer. If you go a little bit extreme there, make sure to use smooth. For some reason, it's not working right now. Is that better? No. If this happens, sometimes it happens to me when I'm opening other softwares. I'm just going to save this real quick. So let's save this as X. There we go. And uh, let me just reopen Blender real quick. So very, very common. Sometimes, depending on the tablet, sometimes you'll get that sort of effect. Let's go here. And as you can see, there we go. So now I have way, way more control over my stuff. And as you can see, I can start adding all of these elements, smoothing them out as well, like cleaning a little bit of that effect and adding sort of like the wood grain for our X. So let's start down here. And let's start adding a little bit of this effect. What if we add like a, like a knot? So right around here, we're going to add this very like stylized, again, very World of Warcraft sort of like a, like a detail, right? We're going to go right here. Now, if you still feel like this looks a little bit too um, pixelated, you can always go back or, or down here and make this even smaller. So like 0.2, control R, you can see we're now at 200 and uh, 224,000 points, which again, it's perfectly, perfectly fine. How many points you can have will depend on a lot of factors, but it's usually your computer. So depending on the amount of RAM and memory and CPU power that you have, you're gonna be able to push this either, either like really, really high or, or not as high. Let's do another kind of like wood grain going to the side like this, like kind of like around the, the knot. There we go. And I'm using again the draw sharp and being very, very smooth in adding this sort of detail. You can definitely work with a mouse. Uh, I've had students that work with the mouse, but uh, to be honest, it's a, it's a really complicated like process to do it that way. If you can afford to guide uh, yourself a tablet, it's, a, it's one of the best investments that you can do as a, as a 3D artist. So let's do this right here and keep adding all of this elements. So again, very soft, like lines, very scraggly. Like I, I don't care too much about precision. Wood grain tends to have this sort of effect. So it's not like super straight lines or anything. And then we have here the, the symmetry line. In this case, I'm, I'm kind of like going to ignore the symmetry and just like go and follow a very obvious path. So I'm not caring too much. If this was production, I'll probably take a, a little bit more, or I'll be a little bit more careful to make sure that the, that the symmetry is not as evident. In this case, as you can see, this looks perfectly, perfectly fine. Now, one thing that I want to add is on the top and on the bottom, I, I kind of want to add like the caps that you sometimes see in, in wood like elements. So I'm going to go here to the bottom part and let's start adding like this sort of cap right here. Let's try to keep the symmetry very clean right there. There we go. Same thing on the top side. We're gonna add the the very nice clean cut right there. Another one right here, another circle right there. Perfect. Now to change the silhouette a little bit, because right now it still looks very like flat, right? Very, very cylindrical. I'm gonna go to my clay strips, which is another brush that I really like. I'm gonna change the uh, width here of the brush, and I'm gonna start adding, you know, a little bit of a bump right here on the wood. I also like that this gives a, a very like nice, interesting texture to the whole thing. So it's a perfect way to, to break up the silhouette so that when we see it from the side, not everything is perfectly, perfectly straight. We can even use control. Again, remember when you use control, you're using the negative like effect of whatever brush you're using at that point. So in this case, when we're using control, we're um, removing volume from our element. We're gonna go all the way down here. There we go. We go right there. And we can have some stuff over here as well. There we go. A little bit more volume right there, a little bit more volume right there. And as you can see, this is starting to look very stylized, very cool. I'm gonna use the scrape brush, the scrape brush as we used it before. It's a very cool brush, not only to do the sort of bevel, it's not really good to clean the surfaces a little bit. So all of those like strokes that we have right there, you can start cleaning them up with that brush and generate a very, very cool effect. And that's it. Look at that. We get a very, very cool, like little effect right there for our handle. And at any point we can go back to layout. And yes, this is going to be a little bit too intense on the layout side of things. You can see that, um, let's go to uh, solid mode. It's very, very heavy, but in this case, like my computer can, can handle it. 
So for the blade, like for this axe right here, here's where we can use the other method that I showed you before, the subdivision method. We're gonna show you some important things that we need to keep in mind to get the best approach. So I'm not gonna care about the overlap that I'm about to generate, but let's go right here. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and let's add a mesh. We're gonna add a cube. I'm gonna move this cube and scale it so that we have it right around there. There we go. So that's a good thickness, I would say, for the, for the back part. I'm going to go to edit mode, go to this face right here. Let's go to the top view. I'm going to press E to extrude this out. And then I'm going to do a G and a Y to push it to the side. And here I'm going to define how thick I want this to be. So I'm going to say S and X. And I'm going to bring this all the way in, something like that. That looks good. Now, of course, we want to capture this sort of like silhouette. So I'm going to go to the front view. I'm going to scale on Z. So S, Z, let's scale out. G and Y to push this in a little bit. There we go. And we're going to start adding some divisions. So I'm going to start with the first one. Let's do one right there, two and three. We're going to go to wireframe mode, go to vertex mode, and we're going to select all of these guys, G and uh, Y to push them out. And then this one, G and Y to push it out again. I'm going to now go with this guy. I'm going to add one line right there and one line right here. What I want to do here, I'm going to do a little bit more manual approach. So I'm just going to G and change things a little bit. I'm going to do this a little bit asymmetrical, to be honest, because we're doing this sort of like stylized axe. So we're going to do and push this one a little bit lower. So something like that. Yeah, there we go. So that's looking good. I still think it's a little bit too thick on the on the front side here. So I'm going to go to top view. I'm going to grab all of this, guys. Let's do and scale on X to start making this a little bit flatter. Same for this one, scale on X, make it a little bit flatter. We can even add a little bit of like curvature to it like that. And S on X, there we go. So now as you can see, we got this very, very cool like section. And I purpose purposely left this a little bit thicker on the front side because I don't want to like have a super like a clean effect. I want this again to be World of Warcraft Dish. So, so something like this should work just fine. Now, we're not going to be using remeshing for this one. We want to play or do things a little bit differently. So in order to do that, one of the things that we need to do is we need to prepare the topology of the object because we're going to be using our subdivision uh, multi-resolution modifier. So to do that, I'm going to go to my loop cut. I'm going to add one more loop cut here because one of the important things, I'm going to add one here, one here, and one here. One of the important things is we want to try to keep the the um, like the faces in a very uniform way. So we don't want any face to be like way bigger than other faces. It should be fairly, fairly uniform. So if I now go to my modifier and add, I, I, I add a multi-resolution modifier and I start dividing, you're going to see that we're going to keep a very nice shape. That's that's quite nice. It's quite round. I like it. I think it looks nice. So I'm just going to subdivide this one more time. One more time. Let's do five times, like a lot of times, right? So on the viewport, I want to see the three subdivision level so that's not super heavy. When we want, when we jump into sculpting, as you can see, we're going to be able to see this very, very cool effect. Now here, I'm actually not going to use symmetry. I want to do this asymmetrical. I'm going to start using my tools, such as the scrape brush, for instance, to start giving this a little bit more of a for beveled effects. So I'm going to start just like hitting different parts of my element and beveling all of these corners right here to create a, a more sharp effect. Look at that. So again, this is the kind of stuff that's very, very difficult to do traditionally when we're modeling with like polygons and bevels and things like that. But when we're doing this, it's a lot, lot easier. So for instance, here on the blade, look at that. I can generate this very like nice, noisy, sort of like a rusted effect on the edge asymmetrically, imagine how many polygons we would need to do in order to do this in traditional modeling. That's quite a bit of polygons. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, but, but the thing is, this is going to be really heavy. Like, how are we then going to make use of this in a production? If this is for a video game or if this is for a film, you're probably going to have to do something called retopology. And we're going to have to do something called bakes to transfer all of this amazing detail that we're sculpting right now into more um, appropriate and production ready maps that are going to be projected on top of your models. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about where you can learn all of this at the very end of the video. I don't want to spoil the surprise just yet. Uh, but this is part of the production pipeline. Now, if you don't want to do production pipeline, you just want to 3D print this maybe for like a cosplay or something, that's it. Like you just like export this as an STL and you're ready to go. So sculpting has a lot of practical uses and you don't always need to 
to generate like a lot of like stuff. I'm gonna go to my clay strips and I wanna I wanna add something like I don't know like a little bit of rust or something. So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller here, and I'm just gonna start adding, you know, a little bit of like like rust or or gunk or however you wanna call this thing right there. Just a just a little bit of change here around the around the wood handle. Same thing like here. Let's just like carve in a little bit there. We can even add some like hits right here. Let's add another one right around here. Another one right around here. I'm gonna use the scrape brush again to like flatten those ones. See how that starts looking kind of like damaged metal. Really cool, right? If at any point you don't like it, you just use a smooth brush and you you get rid of that one. On this other side, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna use the clay brush, clay brush, and just sorry, clay strips. Just start removing a little bit of damage here and here. Let's move this out, and there we go. I'm gonna use now my draw sharp, and for instance, we can start adding some scratches, especially if we make this really, really thin. We can start adding some, some scratches on the ax. It's also gonna make it look really, really cool. A lot more, um, a lot more realistic, right? That this thing has gone through, through some work. And there we go. Not bad, right? Not freaking bad for a very quick tutorial right now. I'm gonna go to clay uh, strips and I kinda wanna, uh, you know how when you sharpen an, uh, an etch you always get like this sort of like border? Well, there's a very cool brush that we have right here as well. That's called the mask brush. So all the way down here, we got this mask brush and, uh, oh, where is it? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, that's the mask brush. There we go. So as you can see, I'm just gonna press F. It's, it's white, that's why we don't see it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a very like rough mask here on the front. And what this mask does is it allows me to work on the edge of the ax without modifying other parts of the element. So it's a very cool way to protect certain areas and focus only on the areas that you want. There's of course ways and uh, more advanced ways to uh, mass things and create groups and stuff like that. But I'm just teaching you the basics so that you can uh, understand the, the very basic process right now. So I'm gonna go to clay strips again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start removing with control a little bit of the volume here around the mask. And what's gonna happen as you see right there is it's pretty much like if we're removing metal from that bit and we're gonna get a very rough, very nice like etch on the, on the front part here of the ax. There we go. And then we can use our flatten brush and just flatten all of these things that are like a little bit far away from the uh, from the edge or from the mask. And now what's gonna happen, oh, that's actually too aggressive. Let me go back. So right here, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a scrape brush instead to just flatten this a little bit and flatten this a little bit. And now when we go to the mask option, where's the mask? The mask, the mask. We can use control to just erase the mask or we can go and um, there's another option right here. Mask, I'm just gonna say mask and clear mask. Alt M is the shortcut. And look at that. So we've successfully added this very, very nice border which we can continue to work with. So for instance, if I go back to the clay strips and I wanna make this a little bit more intense, I can start removing this, especially with a very small brush and creating a really, really intense like uh, really jaggedy like corrosion sort of style here from the from the base of the steel all the way to the other side so this is it my friends this is the magic of sculpting inside of a blender it's a very 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 cool process i love sculpting in every single software but blender is a very very like friendly because you don't need to do any like extreme stuff. You can use remeshing as we did with the handle of this uh, very cool ax, or you can go directly into multi-resolution modifiers like this one right here to generate a very, very cool effect. So remember I told you about a little surprise that I had for you? I actually have a course where I teach you how to do this in a very, very advanced production level way. So if you want to learn how to do this, check this out. Hey guys, do you want to learn how to create amazing 3D weapons? Well, look no further. In this course, I will show you everything you need to know to create this amazing result. My name is Abraham Leal. I have over 13 years of experience in the industry and I will be your instructor throughout this course. 
In this course, we'll cover everything from modeling to rendering a fantasy weapon with the best quality and results. I will be teaching you industry-proven techniques and workflows so that you too can create amazing AAA assets. We will be using Blender and Substance Painter to do this, and I will be guiding you through every step of the way. Don't worry if you don't know the basics, we have a chapter zero where we will be covering everything about Blender so that you too can achieve great results. We have a full support network as well in our different socials, so make sure to join and get the most out of this experience. Join me in this exciting journey and become the greatest artist you can be. So there you go, guys. If you like this video, please, please let me know in the comments what you think about it. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Even if you don't get the premium course, which I strongly recommend you do because you're going to learn a lot of very cool tips, you can still learn a lot from the channel. We have shorts, we have uh, live streams, we got like this tutorials right here. And I'm going to keep on like uploading stuff about not only this software, but a bunch of other ones. So again, your support is really, really appreciated. And if you want to check the premium course, the link is going to be down here in the description. That's it for this one, my friends. Thank you very much. And I will be seeing you back on the next one. Bye-bye.